In this presentation, we're going to record a transaction related to a donor pledge that has been restricted for the construction project. In other words, there's a construction project that's going to be taking place with the not-for-profit organization and the pledge that is being made is being restricted for use in the construction project. Get ready, because here we go with Aplos. Here we are on our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to go on down to Excel to see what our objective will be. We're going to be moving on over to tab number six. So we're on tab number six. Let's go take a look at our, uh, our items over here. Number four. We're on number four, tab six, number four. And then we have the donor pledge for construction project. So the project life is going to be five years. Project start dates uh, two years from now. Discounted value pledge. 96 160 all right what does that mean that means that uh, we someone's going to give us a pledge so we're imagining a, a scenario where we're going to get a pledge however that pledge is going to be restricted to a construction project so we then have to record the fact that if there's a specific restriction for it it's going to be a long-term construction project that construction project uh, isn't going to start for two years from today and it will take five years to uh to to do so therefore uh we either aren't going to get the the pledge or and or aren't going to be able to use it until that that time period which is two years from today so that means that we need to record on the books we need to record that this this person says they're going to give us money so we want to track that so that we can uh make sure that we we do our best to collect on it but we also want to record the fact that if we're going to report this on the on the financials on the balance sheet we're going to show it as a restricted item but we also want to show that it's not really valued at the 109-100 restricted item, but rather at its discounted value due to the time value of money. So considering the project won't start for two years, we're going to discount the value and say it's only worth 96,160 as of today. So I'm not going to get into the time value of money or how you get into that discounting uh, item, but that's, that's the idea that we'll have here. And then, of course, that difference, we're going to have to record that. So how are we going to record that in terms of a, of a journal entry? So let, let's look at the journal entry, and then we'll think about how to enter this into uh, our, our system in Applos. So obviously, we have the, cons the contribution revenue uh, receivable, contribution receivable. The, that's going to be an asset account. It's going to go up. We expect to collect the entire 109-100. Although we expect to collect that entire amount, it's not going to be for two years and or we can't use it for two years. Therefore, we're only going to be recording the contributions uh, with donor restrictions, which is basically our revenue account, but restricted of the 96,160. So revenue goes up by that. There's going to be a difference then of the 12,940. So we're going to record that to an account called discount on contributions receivable. What does that look like on our uh, chart of accounts here? We got the receivable. The receivable is going to go up. People owe us money, so we're going to show that. And then we're going to have this account that's similar to an allowance account. It's a contra asset account. This is going to tell our reader, hey, look, this is how much we expect to receive total on receivables minus what the contra account is going to be, the 12940 in this case. And that will give us then the net receivables. And then if we scroll down below, we've got the contributions uh, with donor restrictions down here, that's basically increasing a type of revenue account, revenue accounts or the contribution accounts being broken out between those with and without restrictions with two accounts here. However, when we bring it over to our uh, statement of activities, statement of activities down below, we're going to break that out with the two columns uh, restricted and unrestricted. We could have one account and break it out by column rather than two separate accounts. So that's going to be our objective. Let's go on back to uh, Applos and see, see if we can apply that objective here. So we're going to go back on into our system. We're going to go into the accounting information. We'll go to the accounting dropdown. And then we want to go to actually not the accounts dropdown, the transactions dropdown. And then let's go to the accounts receivable. So transactions dropdown, accounts receivable. All right, so here's going to be our transaction form. We're going to start off with our customer. I'm just going to make another customer, Pledger 2, or Pledger Construction Project. So this is the, their name, obviously. It's not a very good name, but that's going to be the name that we're going to be using for the pledging uh, project. Again, we would want to set this up uh, in, in our system uh, with more information that, than that by going to the people up top so we get more information 
in there but i'm going to enter the the minimum here we're going to say the memo let's keep it at the pledge we're going to say that the date of this thing or actually the invoice number note is going to be populated for us we'll then enter the date of the invoice which is going to be back on january 7th so january 7th the terms let's make the terms that net 15 once again that gives us the due date of 122 so that's when, when we expect to pay it now actually it's not net 15 this one is that really kind of strange one uh, i'll say no terms here and we actually don't expect it to be paid till till some time out uh, out past that so let's say i mean let's just make this another year 22 <laughs> we get something like that we don't expect to get paid for a while on it or or we don't expect to be able to use it one or the other so in any case we're going to go back to the amount then and then we're going to say that the amount we're going to go back to the to the left and scroll back up top then we're going to say the amount uh 109 so i'm going to say the amount is going to be that 109 100 109 100 and then uh the remaining balance is is that as well and then we might say this is for a long term construction project and then we might say that it's not you know we might not get it paid to whatever the terms are that they're agreeing to pay us in and then we're going to say that uh, we have the accounts receivable and it's going to we're going to put this into the uh, contributions restricted category so it's going to be restricted and then we're going to say it's going to be restricted here so that looks good comment we might want to put you know it's a long-term construction but i'm not going to do it the percentage that we're going to put here uh will be and actually let's populate the amount so i'm going to say the amount is going to be for that 96 160 so 96 160 not the entire amount 96 160 and notice that puts the percentage in for us so you can you can enter either one uh if we oftentimes it's useful to use the percentage if we're breaking out uh, the you know some expenses sometimes or something like that but or you can put the amount and it'll break out the, the expense for you so then we have the tags so we're not going to have or we will have a restricted category here so we got a restricted tag we're going to have to add another restriction because now we have another restricted category we're going to be using for this long-term project so i'm going to go back up top i'm going to add another restricted category i'm going to right click on this tab up top duplicate note how we can kind of do this as we go again this is a, a great thing to have with a with online kind of software to have multiple tabs open i highly recommend getting used to it and then we're going to go to the fund accounting we're going to be, be going to the accounting accounts drop down we're going to be taking a look at the tags so within the tags setting we want to go to the restricted tags and then in the restricted tags i'm going to add a long-term project so i'm going to hit the plus button and let's make the number let's say 650 and make it long term project now obviously in practice you you want to make that more specific you know what which project you know what project so there's a fairly broad name here but it's going to be the long-term project in our generic problem here so we're going to add that long-term project 650 so there we have it and then let's go back to the first tab and then now i can put 650 in this restricted item so 650 and there it is there's the long-term project has now appeared and let's add another row so we're going to add another row now now this one's going to go into that funny new account we have a funny new account which is going to be the discount on construction uh, on contributions receivable that contra revenue account so that one is almost certainly not yet been added to our chart of accounts so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to copy this what is it and then we're going to add it so we're going to do a similar type of thing i'm going to go back on over I'm going to go back to this other tab now this new tab that we set up so we're going to use this now to set up our account that we're going to have to use i'm going to go to the fund accounting we're going to go to the accounts we're going to go on down to the account list and within the account list we want the uh, asset type of account so it's going to be in the asset type of account it's going to be in the current asset area then we want it like close to the receivable pretty close so it's going to be 11 let's say 11 oh five let's say 1105 1105 and then the type 
is going to be uh, I don't need a register I don't just none is fine and then I'm gonna paste the name which is that lo horribly long name that we're taking from the sheet there discount on contributions receivable and activity so I'm gonna keep the activity at uh, we'll keep it there and then we're going to say that uh, that's going to be it. So I'll save that and that'll pick it up to the 1105. And actually I went back in here, like I went back in by clicking on it again. And uh, I do want to change this activity not to cash, it's not a cash account, it should be in the operating. So these are, these are for the statement of cash flows. So this is going to be a, another current asset. So we'll put it into the operating for the statement of cash flows. And if, if you're confused about where exactly to put those, you can kind of copy the same segment. So if I, if I go up here and I went here and, and I, I could see it here and, and then use the same one, which I totally knew, but then I was, you know, I got a little nervous from recording here. So I checked it and then I went back down, but that makes sense because this is the statement of cash flows operating. Uh, that makes sense. So we're going to then say save, and then let's go back on over 1105 is the account. So we're going to go back on over here. We're looking for 1105, 1105. There it is, we've just created it. And then uh, that's gonna be restricted, we'll keep it there. And then again, I'm not gonna go to the percent, but to the other one. And the amounts now is gonna be, the amount is gonna be uh, 12940, 129440, there we have that 11.86% populating for us. And then we will, now you could put the tag here. You don't really need to like 650 uh, if you so choose, but we're really concerned with the tag on, on, on in essence, the income statement line item. This is gonna be a, a balance uh, sheet statement line item. So I'm not as concerned with the tag on the balance sheet line item. Now note that these two amounts here should be adding up to a, the amount up here. What's this gonna do? Accounts receivable, then going up by the 109, 100. The revenue account, but restricted revenue going up by that 96, 160. And then that contra asset account, which is, is going up in a contra asset-y kind of way, which means it's gonna be a, a, you know, a negative asset uh, will go, will, that will happen as well. So we're gonna say submit. Submit that and see if it gives me any kind of red error sign or anything. No, looks good. So let's go. Let's go then to the second tab again. Let's open up our reports. We're going to go to the reports on the right hand side. Opening up our reports. We're going to look at the balance sheet by fund. So we'll open up the good old balance sheet by fund. Let's go back to the tab to the left and then right click on it. Duplicate it. And then we're going to open up the old income statement too. We're going to go to the reports. So let's go to the reports. And then let's go to the income statement by fund as well. And then I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. We're going to change our dates. We're going to select the drop down on the dates. We're going to go back on over to January, January 31st. So there we have that. And then I'm going to go to the drop down up top. I like to have the total column here for us. So I'm going to select, please show me the total column. So now we've got the total column notice that again the balance sheet i'm not as worried about the breakout of the restricted and unrestricted i'm main con mainly concerned down here that, that we have this allocation down here in the equity section but i'm going to keep running i'm going to run this report and it, it because it is you know it's a it's something different it's it's nice that you can do that it's different than uh, what you could typically do in other other software but in any case we're going to say that here is our accounts receivable if we were to select that item then we have now our our invoice there and here's the new invoice we selected if we if we were to select it we would then go to the data input and we could drill down on it going back to our information there then we're going to go to the second tab where we have our income statement we're going to make this for the time range i'm going to say year to date because that's the easiest thing to do and might as well do the easiest thing if it doesn't matter anyways like if it doesn't hurt anything and then I'm going to go down to the total column. Let's add the report layout total. So we have the total column. So there it is. And then this went into, went into the restricted item. So notice again, we have the restricted and unrestricted still broken out by category, but now also broken out by, um, by the, the category in this format, by column and by row. So, and again, if you wanted to present this to someone else and you don't want this breakout here and you just want it to be, be construction, uh, contributions and then broken out in this format just by row by column <laughs> then 
you could use the sub accounts and we might take a look at some more formatting of the reports. We will format the reports more uh, in a future presentation and consider some options such as those. If you were to go into this restricted item here, then once again, you could, you could get your detail. Notice that we have multiple items that are now restricted and there's multiple different restrictions to them. Therefore, we need to be running our report. I'm going to go back. We need to run our report because the next question we can imagine being asked if we were to give this to someone is they say, okay, there you got the 363, 160 in the restricted items. Well, you know, what are the restrict? What does that mean? What, what kind of restrictions are we talking about here? And so if we know that, we're going to go back to the first tab and then say, all right, we got our report. Let's run our report for the restricted items by going to the reports on the right. And then we're going to scroll down to the tags and we want the restricted income statement or the income statement that's under the restricted tags report section. And then I'm going to be running this for the year to date this year to date. So there we have that. And then uh, so that so that's it. So there's our restrictions. So now we have the contributions uh, restricted income being broken out now by the time restriction, the government grant restriction, and now our long-term project. There's our total uh, restricted items, that 363160. If we go back to our income statement, is uh, going to be tying out here with the 363160. So uh, that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.